Hello, Dan Johnson here at AirVenture 2011, reporting for aircraftreporters.tv, and we're talking with Anna Dietrich today with the Terrafugia. This airplane has attracted a lot of media attention, and now we're finally in the game. So, Anna, welcome. Thank you, And uh, tell us a little bit about the project in summary form. You're calling it not a flying car, but a rotable aircraft. That's absolutely Why'd you right. pick a different name? Well, it really affects both how you expect to use the vehicle and how you design the vehicle. So, the transition is an airplane. It's designed to be used in and out of an airport by a trained pilot, sport pilot or higher. And uh, it's been designed as an airplane first and foremost um, that it can drive. You can drive it home, park it in your garage. But uh, it's not sort of the Jetsons flying car that, that people think about. It really is a practical, what we can do today, um, sort of state-of-the-art aircraft. Now, you know, you know I wrote an article about the airplane earlier, and I know you had to meet some standards, one of which is, of course, all the ASTM standards, yes. and Anna serves on the committee that does some of that hard work, so thank you for that as well. Uh, that's a whole list of things, and it's not small, but that's not all you had to do. You had to deal with the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. I think I've got that yes, mouthful yes, right. Yes, yes, the FMVSS, And that was a bunch absolutely. of stuff. For example, let me pull back here just a little bit, and this thing's got windshield wipers on it. It's got other stuff on it, lights and things. Tell us a few of the things that you had to address about that in order to meet that FMSF, whatever it is, thing. <laughs> FMVSS, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Easy um, for you to yes. say. <laughs> um, so actually, the things that I'm the most proud of from the automotive side are the safety features that we managed to include. There are things like wipers and defrost and lighting and things that like that. That was probably easier. Um, okay. Yeah, that, that is easier. The, the real piece that I think is was an engineering challenge, but it's also really bringing a new level of safety to light aviation is incorporating the automotive safety features that you take for granted in your car into the air. Such as? So we have um, a crumple zone in the front um, that absorbs energy in the event of a front impact. We have a rigid passenger safety cage. It's all carbon fiber box beams, so that protects the passengers. Um, in the event of an accident on the road or an aviation accident. How is that done? With steel structure? With no, composite structure? No, it's all carbon fiber. It's all pre-preg carbon fiber. Is the whole fiber. aircraft carbon it is, fiber? It is, yes. Wings and all? Wings and all. Okay. Yeah, it's all uh, state-of-the-art materials. That gives us the lightweight that we need for a light score, sure. but gives us the strength that we need for that crash safety. So you have your, your automotive e-pillar, your b-pillar, you have your roll protection, you have side impact protection. So the whole package, uh, airbags. Uh, automotive style seatbelt. So you it's guys really, are really very safe airplane. When you're talking about weight, then they actually have an exemption which allows them to weigh more because they are a car. Special exception, huh? Yeah, so we did, um, we had uh, got a little bit of help from both the FAA and the DOT. Um, the FAA last year gave us an additional 110 pounds within the light sport definition. So it's the same as the amphibious light sports, we can weigh 430 pounds gross. Okay. So that gave us, you know, some weight to incorporate those safety features I was just talking about. And on the automotive side, um, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which is the um, sister of the FAA in the DOT that does road vehicles. You're pretty good with um, all those abbreviations. <laughs> been doing this for, for a long time now, a lot alphabet soup out there, but um, they're all, they've all been very helpful. So the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, um, worked with us to provide some exemptions for places where putting an aircraft into the automotive category um, didn't quite work smoothly. Give me one example of a place that they conceded a little bit. Well, the windshield here is, is a great example. So okay. this is a coat, hard coated polycarbonate windshield. Um, state of the art for an aircraft, um, but it's not automotive safety glass. Um, meaning that the, that meaning spider that's web, the spider thing. web stuff. So okay. if you were to get a bird strike on an automotive safety glass windshield, it would spider and it would obstruct your view. We uh -huh. didn't want that. That's so good. Um, yeah. It's also a lot heavier than polycarbonate, so it's a weight challenge as well. So they allowed us to use this coated polycarbonate, um, which has comparable. Um, safety impact protection in terms of things actually getting through the windshield. Partly because of the coating? It. Right. Well, no, the coating actually is to allow the windshield wiper to run on it. I see. Okay. Without um, scratching. Right. Okay. But the uh, the polycarbonate is strong enough to keep something from penetrating into you to, to protect the occupants, but it deforms the dozen spider web. Okay. So that's a much safer option for first, right? But, a little more important for a pilot to be able to see Right. Exactly. Well, exactly. Yeah. So that was something that they were willing to, to work with us on. So that was, that was very beneficial. Excellent. So how, how far along are they in the program? now of getting this so that it's back flying again? Good question. Yeah, very good question. So as you know, our proof of concept aircraft did its flight testing about two years ago now. Um, we incorporated a lot of the things that we learned from that vehicle into the one that we have here. This one is going to be flight hardware. It's not quite there yet. Uh, we'll be taking it back. This is, is this number two? This is number size, two. Yeah, this is number there. two. Yep. 
Okay. This is number two. Number three is currently under construction. It's a little bit behind this one. That's the one that looks a little different? No, or is it just another one that looks like this? this one. We've exactly, seen some yeah. nice pictures of the next thing, I guess. Yeah, no, this is this is, um, this is is the next generation design. So this is what we'll be delivering um, towards the end of next year. Okay. So between now and then, we have uh, some testing to do. We want to finish up some things on this one. And uh, we'll be doing drive testing, taxi testing, and then flight testing over the course of the next Give year. Give me an example of uh, one or two things that you changed from the first one to this one that made this better in terms of whichever driving or flying? Uh, well, one of the things that we did, um, we could take, we took off the canard, um, and that was something that we now yeah, used have to have. Used to have some little wings right, down here. Yeah, so we now have just a nice integrated bumper that's integrated directly into that crash structure. Is that because about. you found the tail surfaces did the job sufficiently? Well, or actually, um, we never really wanted to have a canard on the aircraft, but the original category that we did put it on the road required a full width bumper. Um, oh, is that why that was there? Yes, that was why that was there. So we figured, well, if we have to have a full width bumper, it might as well do something. Is that one of the things uh, NHTSA conceded to you then? Yeah, they decided that um, it actually made more sense for us to be in the multi-purpose passenger vehicle category, okay. which has a little bit more flexibility. It's the same category that you certify SUVs and like trucks into. Ah, okay. Um, and the, the definition that, that we're hung on there is that they're designed for occasional off-road use. Ah, okay. So flying. Well, I would think that's occasional off road. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the new definition to off road, yes, though, it isn't is, it? It is. So that was one of the things that happened for us after we had built the proof of concept. So we were able to take off the canard. Anything you don't need on an airplane, you shouldn't have it. Absolutely. So took off the canard, um, and that precipitated a few other minor aerodynamic changes um, throughout the vehicle. But that's that's one that people notice right off the bat. So you're kind of airplane people, you and Carl, and the rest of the team, I know. How much new discovery did you have to go to had to go through to become car people? Well, we did have the the luxury of being able to hire a couple of very good car people. Um, okay. Our, out of the auto industry. Yeah, out of the okay. auto industry. One of our um, one of our senior engineers uh, spent a lot of time working on carbon fiber vehicles, both electric vehicles, solar cars, okay. Perfect. and um, you know. This, Outfitting new, new tech, yeah, cars, new, te right? new technology, yeah. So he had a lot of experience with lightweight, high performance, um, state of the art automotive industry stuff as well. So we've we've kind of hired people in that have more experience where where maybe we don't. So it's a, it's been a great team effort. But I'll bet you you've done some learning on that too. Huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we've we've learned a lot over the last six years. It's been a great experience. Cool. I was just going to ask you how long you've been at it. So six years, six just years. about the yeah, time the LSA about, segment yeah. started. Mm -hmm. And yeah. as I recall. You decided you could do this because of light sport. That's aircraft. true. Yeah, the light sport rule was what allowed us to figure out a business plan that we could really close around doing a new aircraft. Um, so it gave us a business plan that we could present to an investor with a reasonable expectation that they would actually make money off of it, which is something that is fairly new in And uh, you and uh, <laughs> our friends over at Icon have been sort of notable in that way that mm -hmm. you've been forced, or it was your decision, or however you want to describe that, you had to go into fundraising mode in addition to design and marketing mode. Sure. Well, anytime you have a you know you have a dream, you have a passion, you want to see something become a reality, um, it takes resources to do it. So part of making that dream a reality is not just building a plane, it's building a company. And we've been very conscious of that from the beginning, that you know, we need to assemble the team, um, both of employees and investors and, and regulation and support and really get the whole package together. So we've been we've been building a company for the last six years, not just building a prototype aircraft. And so what is the team inside the facility? Not, not the investors, not the other guys, but the, the group of you that actually have hands on or, or, or keyboard on or <laughs> however you do all that. How many of there are you? There's about two dozen of us now. Um, after Oshkosh last year, we actually moved into an initial production facility. We're in one of the Boston suburbs still, but uh, we have about 20,000 square feet there, and that's where we're building these aircraft and where we'll probably do um, very early production. And we're looking right now at other options for where it makes sense for us to expand even further sure. into production expand down the road. Sounds good. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about where we can go. Give us a web address is what we're looking for, Anna, about where we go to get more information about the Terra Fugia, the correct pronunciation, yep, I believe, Fugia, yep. transition, and that's the aircraft name. Yep. Where do we find more about it, Anna? Uh, DrivenToFly.com. DrivenToFly.com. Yeah. Now, that's a new web address, isn't it? It is. It, it does direct you back to TerraFugia.com, okay. but it's a little bit easier for people to spell. So, so Driven driven to fly, not to, but T-O. Yeah, DrivenToFly.com. And we also do a good job of updating Facebook. So. Good. And follow them on Facebook. Because these are all young folks. They know about all that <laughs> Facebook stuff. So good for you for being on there as well. Using the social media yeah, to your advantage. Do you have any information on this aircraft? Or I do, Dave. I wrote an article about it earlier. And uh, someday I'm going to look forward to a pilot report. But I guess I'm going to have to wait a little while. But you can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. And you can see this video on aircraftreporters.tv.